front page of the New York Post, there is outrage after a domestic terrorist who was convicted of killing two New York City cops in 1971 gets paroled. Family upset, law enforcement upset, many of us as well. Nate Rogers has the full story. Nate, what happened? Bill Herman Bell's parole was denied seven times previously. This time parole was granted after he reportedly admitted that he was not a political prisoner, just a murderer. Now earlier today, Diane P. and along with her daughters, joined NYPD and other city leaders calling for the state's parole board to be fired. What pains me today is that this decision has put a bullseye on every officer that serves this city and this country. Someone can kill an officer of the law and eventually get out of prison. Officers Joseph Piagentini and Waverly Jones were killed May 21st, 1971, outside the former Colonial Park public houses in Harlem. The officers were led there by a fake 911 call for help. Waverly was shot in the head and died immediately. Piagentini sustained more than 22 bullets and died on the way to the hospital. I have two grandchildren that will never know him four and six, what am I going to tell them when they eventually ask, what happened, Grandma? Herman Bell, Anthony Bottom, and Albert Washington were convicted of the murders in 1973. The Black Liberation Army, an entity of the Black Panther Party, took credit for the ambush soon after. Bell has served 47 years in prison. Washington died in prison years ago, and Bottom is up for parole in June. These men are evil. The only thing that brings us any solace is that one of them died in prison. They all should have died in prison. Bell, now 70 years old while in prison, reportedly earned a master's degree in sociology and mentors young inmates. The son of Officer Waverly Jones supports the parole board's decision, reportedly expressing forgiveness. Now, Bell is expected to be released from prison on April 17th of this year. In New York, I'm Nate Rogers for Chasing News. Thanks, Nate. All right, let's bring in the A-plus panel to talk about this uh, very, very challenging and difficult story to wrap your head around. Afia Yunus, immigration attorney, joins us again. Good to see you, Afia. Jeanette Hoffman, political strategist, back with us. Good to see you, Jeanette. And former prosecutor and defense attorney Bob Bianchi is back. Great to see you, Bob. Uh, Afia, I want to start with you. Um, the details of and the brutality of the crime, not just a murder, but the, you know, the officer begging for his life and this guy shooting him and then finally admitting in 2012 that he had done it. This seems unfair, unjust at so many levels. I mean, there's no question that the crime itself was horrendous and, and, a, and an egregious crime, but um, I think I might be alone on this one. I, I, I think uh, I do believe in reform and I do believe in rehabilitation. And if it's been over 40 years and the parole board who didn't, who had an option on releasing him decided to release him, then, then this is be. such a gruesome crime, Bill. I agree with the PBA president in this case who said this type of evil cannot be rehabilitated. And he was guilty of, of not one cop murder, but two. There was another murder in San Francisco that he later admitted to. Which I understand he cut a deal on, Bob, yeah. and got probation. This is an outrage. The parole board had an opportunity to make a decision, and with all due respect, I don't necessarily have uh, the confidence that they made the right one here. Cops are dead, brutally killed, tortured, if you will. Another one in California where the prosecutors gave it away because they looked at it like, well, he's got a life sentence in New York, so what's so big about this? And we hear, if it's true, that he was convicted in the prison recently of assaulting another law enforcement officer. What are they thinking? This is an outrage, Bill. And it, it, I, I mean, somebody should do something about this and reverse this decision. And to your point, by the way, I'll tell you why he did it in 2012, because he was parole eligible for 25, after 25 years. So he has been setting this bad boy up since that time to say, hey, I'm remorseful. I now admit it. I don't buy it. He should have gotten the death penalty, but I guess they didn't have they it didn't in have New York the death at the time. They didn't have life without parole at the time, so he's, he's lucky in that regard. But he has shown nothing in my mind that we see from a demonstrable record that would allow somebody to committed such a heinous act in two different states to be released. It's a shame. Avi, what do you think? I mean, death penalty, that's my first thought is you prevent this. If you have the death penalty, we're not even having this conversation. I mean, we don't have this the killer is dead. We don't have the parole board reports. And then also even one of the own cop's sons said that he agreed with the release of the inmate. I I'm sorry, I disagree with both of you. I believe in reform and rehabilitation and to be in uh, in prison for 40 years. Um, I believe there's an well, opportunity there for reform. Charles Manson, with all due respect, that aren't rehabilitatable 
and in my opinion, should not be repatriated into society where they continue to pose a risk. Well, again, there's a difference the between redemption and feeling that somebody can, you know, find their peace at the same time uh, releasing a killer, not just a cop killer, uh, but a domestic terrorist. So I once mean, a killer, guy, always I mean, this guy's a bad dude. So once exactly a killer, always a killer. Is that what it uh, is? Well, I think in this case, you kill three cops like that, and then you admit to it. I think the death penalty is the only just punishment, and uh, I'll bet it revives that debate about death for convicted cop killers. We'll see. Thanks, guys.